China may look like it's backtracking on Russia, but it's all part of a new strategy to make Russia the next North Korea. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of. And you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps you stop them. I'll explain more at the end. So, the Chinese Communist Party is trying to maintain a delicate balancing act following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's desperately trying not to get caught up in the international backlash, while still showing support for Russia and for Ukraine. Yes, they're trying to be friendly to both Russia and Ukraine. Kind of hard when one is invading the other. China's response to the invasion has been bizarre, but it's gradually giving way to a clearer understanding of Beijing's ultimate strategy, turning Russia into a new North Korea. I'll explain more in a moment. But the big question has been, did China know Russia was going to invade? Is it just me, or does it look like these guys are both in on a big secret? No? Just me? Okay. Weeks before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Xi Jinping met with Vladimir Putin ahead of the Beijing Winter Olympics. I see they decided to go with the color-coordinating ties again. After that meeting, China and Russia released a joint statement saying the China-Russia friendship has no limits and there are no forbidden areas of cooperation. They also made a bunch of economic deals, including one for a new gas pipeline from Russia to China. Good timing, given that Russia's newest gas pipeline to Europe just got shut down. Just days before the invasion, China was saying the U.S. was exaggerating the Russian threat to Ukraine. But that headline didn't age well. Now, that was after the U.S. government spent months trying to convince Chinese officials that Russia was about to invade Ukraine. Like I said in a previous episode, Chinese officials totally dismissed what the U.S. was saying, and then turned around and gave that information to Russia, and told them China would not try to impede Russia's plans and actions. Was this just because the Chinese Communist Party didn't believe Russia would actually invade Ukraine? Or was there more going on? Well, there are growing reports that the Chinese regime did know about Russia's invasion, and in fact asked them to delay it until after the Beijing Olympics were over. The latest evidence of that comes from a Western intelligence report. But hey, maybe the Chinese regime didn't know for sure that Russia was going to invade Ukraine. They just thought it was a possibility, even though they were publicly denying that and wanted to warn Russia off. You see, Russia had invaded Georgia back in 2008 during the Beijing Summer Olympics, which upset the Chinese Communist Party. And Russia invaded Crimea during the 2014 Winter Olympics in Russia. That's awkward. Clearly, the only way to stop Russia from invading other countries is to get rid of the Olympics. Either that or force Putin to compete in every Olympic sport. He'll be so busy doping, he won't have time to invade anyone. But the bottom line is, either China knew Russia was going to invade and was lying, which put the lives of Chinese citizens in Ukraine at risk, or they had a massive intelligence failure. Neither exactly makes the party look rosy. But the Chinese Communist Party has a superpower taking an awful situation and turning into a propaganda victory. Just look at COVID. I'll tell you how they're spinning the Russian invasion after this quick commercial break. Welcome back. As Russia invaded Ukraine, Chinese state-run media got to work by censoring any critical coverage of Russia. A leaked censorship directive said no posts unfavorable to Russia or with pro-Western content should be published. China has still refused to call it an invasion and mostly blames the U.S. for the violence that's happening in the uh, not-invasion. Just like Russia, China is calling it a special military operation. A special military operation just like their special bond. It's no surprise that the Chinese Communist Party is using Russia's invasion to blame America. That's pretty much their default position. Blame America. But they can't take it too far. A senior editor at Xinhua News Agency posted that China has to back up Russia with emotional and moral support while refraining from treading on the toes of the United States and European Union. Again, a delicate balancing act, especially because China has huge investments in Ukraine. 
But you know who doesn't do delicate? Chinese internet trolls. They've been cheering on the Russian invasion. I mean, special military operation. They've called Putin, Putin the Great, the best legacy of the former Soviet Union, and the greatest strategist of the century. A Chinese translation of a speech Putin gave last Thursday went viral. The hashtag got more than a billion views in just a day. One person wrote, if I were Russian, Putin would be my faith, my light. And that's the more polite stuff. As countless Ukrainian refugees fled the country, one post that got a lot of attention said, if some Ukrainian beauty has lost her home and needs a home, maybe I can help. Cute. The problem is, the crude jokes and pro-Russia sentiment on the Chinese internet is causing Chinese nationals in Ukraine to fear for their safety. Seems Ukrainians have less of a sense of humor about the special military operation invading their country. There are reports of Chinese nationals being harassed in Ukraine. One expert on Sino-Ukraine relations said, We completely understand that China is somehow backing Russia. People here don't have time right now to read much about this because they are fighting, but they will take into consideration these cruel jokes from Chinese and the behavior of the Chinese government, and after this war, Ukraine clearly understands who our real friends are. But some of China's nationalistic fervor got taken down a peg because of the insanely botched response by the Chinese embassy in Ukraine. In the weeks before Russia's invasion on February 24th, the US, the UK, Japan, and other nations evacuated their diplomats and urged citizens to leave the country. Not China, though. Hours into the war, the Chinese embassy advised Chinese people to post the country's red flag conspicuously on their vehicles when traveling, indicating that it would provide protection. The state-owned People's Daily, CCTV, and many top government agencies posted about that on Weibo. Many people used the hashtag, the Chinese red will protect you, referring to the flag. This is the whole wolf warrior idea, that China is a powerful nation that will protect its people anywhere in the world. In fact, it is literally a scene from Wolf Warrior 2. The main character is escorting a group of Chinese people through a war-torn African country. He ties a Chinese flag to his arm. And as the African fighters see the group coming, they go, It's the Chinese! Hold your fire! And the two sides literally part to let the Chinese flag through. But guess what? This isn't the movies. Less than two days later, China's embassy in Kiev offered new advice. Don't display your identity, or anything that might give away that you are Chinese. It got worse. The Chinese embassy canceled evacuations over the weekend because they said they couldn't ensure people's safety along the way. Then on Tuesday, they advised Chinese citizens who wanted to evacuate to leave as soon as possible by train. Many Chinese citizens say they felt they have effectively been told to fend for themselves. The embassy said they couldn't help. If you can flee yourself, just flee yourself. The Chinese ambassador in Ukraine even had to post a video online to prove he had not fled the country. Then, a Chinese national was shot trying to leave Ukraine. The good news is that person survived. But if Chinese people in Ukraine are pretty worried right now, don't be. Because the Chinese Communist Party is doing great at evacuating people, according to the Communist Party. And you know whose fault it is that Ukrainians are mad at China? America! It's all because CNN and the New York Times are just exaggerating by saying that Chinese internet comments are cheering Russia's invasion. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that Chinese officials refuse to call it an invasion. Which brings me to what I think is the Chinese Communist Party's master strategy. Turn Russia into North Korea. I'll explain after this final commercial break. Welcome back. So, China is going to try and turn Russia into North Korea, and not the way the rest of the world is turning Russia into North Korea, by condemning them at the UN, isolating them, and cutting business ties. No, the Chinese Communist Party has something different in mind. After the Chinese national was shot in Ukraine, China started calling for a de-escalation in violence. The Chinese regime is now saying it is extremely concerned about the harm to civilians in Ukraine. Is this an about-face by the Chinese Communist Party? Did they see the harsh reaction to the invasion and are throwing Russia under the bus? No, this is strategy. The Chinese Communist Party wants to be the world's go-between to help resolve the Russia issue. The same strategy China used with North Korea. You see, 
China is seen around the world as North Korea's only friend, which means if the rest of the world wants to get North Korea to do something, they have to go through China. Or Dennis Rodman. Remember the six party talks during the Bush and Obama administrations? Where Beijing essentially played host to all the countries concerned about North Korea. Yeah, those talks failed to actually stop North Korea, but they did make China look good, like a partner the rest of the world should work with. This is exactly what the Chinese Communist Party wants with Russia. To have China be seen as the only country on earth that can possibly get Putin to listen. Which is partly the thinking that led the Biden administration to try and get China to stop Russia from invading Ukraine in the first place. Which didn't work, but it did make China look like a partner the US should work with. And guess what? China says it's ready to play a role in a ceasefire. Which only makes sense, because Putin will listen to Xi. Xi literally gave him a friendship medal. That's why Chinese state-run media is pushing out reports of Xi's call with Putin late on Friday that focused on the Russian leader's willingness to negotiate. As the Washington Post says, China is believed to have more influence over Russia than any other country due to the nation's growing security and economic ties. As Russian President Vladimir Putin prepared to invade, the United States called on China to use its influence over Moscow to urge a diplomatic solution. It's all happening according to the Chinese Communist Party's plan. Or is it? Because it seems like at least some countries are a little skeptical about Chinese officials trying to play both sides here. Even though the Chinese regime tries to make it seem like they're being neutral, people can see they're basically defending Russia. Especially when they just repeat the same talking points about blaming NATO. And after reports that China was going to help negotiate a ceasefire, a Western European diplomat rolled their eyes when asked whether they would trust Beijing to defuse the situation. When diplomats start rolling their eyes, you know it's bad. According to that anonymous European diplomat, we have zero expectation of China to deliver on this. Everything we learned in the last few years through COVID and wider relations means we don't trust China. That's something, I guess. It would be more reassuring if a non-anonymous person was willing to say that. but. Hopefully, Europe can wake up and change how they deal with China just as fast as they did with Russia. Because relying on China to stop Russia is going to go just about as well as relying on China to stop North Korea. Remember, according to the Chinese Communist Party, when they say they're not going to join sanctions on Russia, or they sign a new gas deal with a Russian pipeline that will help Russia get around European sanctions, China isn't propping up an authoritarian regime bent on invading the West. No, they're just playing a vital role in negotiations with their best friend. And this episode has been sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. Your name, your email, your home address, your social security number, your employment history, all sorts of things. What are they doing with your data? They're buying it, selling it, and trading it like you're a commodity. If all they do is use it to sell you products, you're lucky. Some of them use it to adjust your credit score, or potentially more nefarious things. And if any of those companies get hacked, you could be in big trouble. Like in 2013, hackers got into Yahoo and exposed personal information on 3 billion users. That's right, nearly half the planet. You never know when that kind of data breach is going to happen. And when it does, you don't want your personal information to be there. When I signed up for Incogni, I discovered there were 76 data brokers that potentially had my private information. I had never heard of most of these companies. They had definitely heard of me. Incogni forces these companies to delete your data. There are laws that allow you to do this, but if you want to do it yourself, you'd have to figure out the applicable laws, write letters in a specific legal way, and follow up to make sure your instructions are followed. Incogni handles this for you. Just two weeks after signing up, Incogni had already gotten my details removed from 10 of these data brokers, with 44 more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. So check out Incogni using the link below, or go to incogni.com uncensored. The first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 20% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.